In this segment of The Anatomy of a Print, where we take a closer look at Colonial Williamsburg's print collection, I'll be talking about engravings depicting the months of the year, particularly the months of March and May after the work of Robert Dighton. Sets of thematic prints were popular in 18th century England and America. Sets like those depicting the four seasons, the times of day, the arts, the elements, and sets of the months connecting the occupations, activities, dress, and weather associated with each month of the year, featuring elegantly attired young women. The practice of depicting months visually didn't originate in the 18th century. Rather, it has origins in the Middle Ages with the Christian religious tradition of books of hours. Though some of the themes remain the same, the secular prints of the 18th century were very different in form and function from these religious texts. They were decorative rather than devotional. Here we see how December is depicted from three different sets. She's engaged in cozy, wintry activities like reading or picking holly, and of course, dressed in warm winter fashions. Sets of prints, like the months, were popular because they presented unified themes and narratives. But when framed and hung on the wall, they could fill a space just as well as more expensive paintings or larger prints, like these four glass transfer prints from a set of 12 months of the year in the chamber over the parlor at the governor's palace. Let's take a closer look at a set of mezzotints based on the work of Robert Dighton and published by print seller Carrington Bowles around 1780. The set follows the conventions of the genre, featuring a young woman who is both fashionably and seasonally dressed, engaging in leisure activities that are appropriate for each month. But this set is particularly useful to us today because it includes so many details about 18th century home furnishings, architecture, fashion, and much more. To demonstrate how these prints can be used to better understand the material culture of the 18th century, we're going to look at the prints for March and May. First, the seasonal aspect. She's inside an elegantly decorated interior, watching the windy and chilly weather outside the window. Blustery weather is a common theme for the month of March in these prints. She's sewing, a largely indoors activity, and carries a work bag. But notice the hardware next to the window holding the curtain poles. In the 18th century, these were known as cloak pins. In the May print, we see another use for cloak pins. The woman is standing in a different interior, leaning against an open window, suggesting a warm day. She's looking outside at the activities of May 1st, or May Day. Revelers are dancing around a maypole. Now notice the garment hanging on the cloak pin to the left of the figure. We see that these objects had another use, in this case, to hold a cloak. Today, Colonial Williamsburg's print collection is an important resource for our curators, tradespeople, interpreters, and historians, as well as outside researchers, because they offer a unique window into the 18th century world. They can help us visualize what written documents sometimes leave out. For example, a probate inventory might tell us that a person had six chairs, but how did they sit in them? Or not sit in them? You can use the print collection to get some ideas. Even though they depict English settings and interiors, they are so useful for understanding the material world of 18th century Williamsburg, because residents emulated English culture and fashion. There are so many more details to explore and discover in these prints, so please visit our online collections at emuseum.history.org to learn more.